Medicare fraud costs taxpayers an estimated $60 billion a year. One big problem area is power wheelchairs. In recent months, we've had some revealing conversations with people who sold and prescribed them. They say the industry bullies doctors and that Medicare is writing checks that should never be cashed. If you're living with limited mobility, call the Scooter Store today. With more than a hundred million dollars a year spent on these ads, you've likely seen one. And if you became intrigued, Brian Setzer was one of the men you talked to next. I feel they were pushing harder and harder to get more chairs sold. From 2006 until 2011, Setzer was a salesman at the Scooter Store, the country's largest supplier of power wheelchairs. But he says the company's main goal is not to help patients. It's to bulldoze doctors into writing prescriptions. Bulldoze and get them to get the paperwork done. So people could get those mm -hmm. wheelchairs? Yes. Even if they didn't need them? Yeah. The issue is that once a doctor has written a prescription, Medicare rarely checks to see if the chairs are actually necessary. And the problem was crystallized when the Inspector General released this report, finding that industry-wide, 80% of Medicare payments for power chairs are made in error, most going to people who don't need them or who lack proof they need them. From 2009 to 2012, government auditors found the scooter store overbilled Medicare by as much as $108 million. Senator Bob Corker of the Special Committee on Aging is looking into this very issue. There's a lot of government programs that aren't always done the right way, but an 80 percent error rate, where does that rank? Think about that. So um, we have people within the sort of the bowels of government here that know that we've got an 80 percent error rate and it just continues. Three other former scooter store employees told us the company ranked doctors based on whether they prescribed chairs and that it had a program specifically to get chairs to people that physicians had already deemed ineligible. Brian Setzer says incessant phone calls and visits wore doctors down. I'd get a call, well can you go in and do this to get him to do it, get him to do this. I couldn't feel right in my heart to do that. Who's telling you to do this? Corporate office. Even if you knew they didn't need it? Mm -hmm. And this happened a lot? Oh yeah. They pushed the doc so hard that they didn't want anything to do with you. The inspector general conducted its own investigation of one company, leading them to this evidence. Pictures of a man who got a power wheelchair courtesy of Medicare despite being healthy enough to ride a bike. You may qualify for a power chair at little to no cost to you. When you first saw these ads, you were concerned right away? Immediately, I told my wife we're gonna get an onslaught of questions from patients, and we did. Dr. Jerome Eplin runs a family practice in Illinois. He says the commercials are a real problem. They're led to believe that they need them, they deserve them, and if we don't sign for them, they get upset and, and very often go elsewhere. Patients have walked away from your practice? because yes. you won't give them a power wheelchair. Yes. When the ads are not enough, he says reps from some companies have gone as far as to accompany patients to their appointments with him. There is a significant amount of pressure when that happens. Should they be doing that? I mean, obviously they have the right to do it if the patient says it's okay, but I don't think they should do it. I don't think the representative belongs in the room at all. The, the, the interaction is between me and the patient. The scooter store would not agree to an on-camera interview, but told us it's committed to improving quality of life for seniors and the disabled, saying its rigorous internal screening process, including a Medicare-required face-to-face doctor examination, disqualifies 88% of those seeking Medicare or private insurance reimbursement for power mobility devices. The company did agree to give back $19.5 million for chairs it admitted shouldn't have been paid for. It said that was less than 4% of the Medicare payments the scooter store received in the last two years. I just state uh, who you're with. But according to the Special do, Committee on Aging, the company only agreed to a repayment after the Inspector General threatened to suspend it from federal health programs. And while the scooter store disputes the government's audits, the government found the company owes as much as four times what it's agreed to pay. Corker says all of it is a perfect example of a bureaucracy that is broken. It must make your blood boil, it made mine boil, taking total advantage of taxpayers and damaging a program that is one that seniors uh, uh, count on and depend upon. 
In September, the government launched a pilot program to address this issue. It requires Medicare to approve chairs before they're paid for. But the same companies with the high error rates were hired to run the program, processing the payments to suppliers from the government. Nora, Charlie? So if the auditors said uh, hundred more than $100 million, yeah. um, why was the settlement so much less? It's a very good question. It's a question that two senators, actually we have the letter here, Senators Cole and Blumenthal posed that question to Medicare. Why did you take $19.5 million when you say you're owed $108 million? So we're hoping to find out. So how much do each of these cost? They're not cheap, which is why this adds up. And not an insignificant price. The ones we're talking about here, about $3,500 to $4,000. Wow, and that has added up to a lot.